Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining together as we celebrate the Feast of the Most Blessed Trinity. We'll hear the Word of God in order to strengthen our spirits and keep holy the Lord's Day. Those who are new to the parish or visiting from outside the parish uh, know that you are uh, warmly welcomed and embraced by our community, and you honor us by your presence. Defining the concept of Trinity is no easy task. In fact, until we encounter God face to face, all our efforts to understand the Trinity will fall short. It took the official church almost 300 years before it even came up with the catechism definition many of us learned that the Trinity is three persons in one God. Our scripture writers were much more interested in what God does than in who God is. If we want to understand the Trinity, we need to begin by looking at the many ways God moves in our hearts and in our lives. Thanks to Sandy and Todd Gritzer for being our public voice on our Zoom service. All of you at home in your domestic church do join in the uh, prayers and song. And don't forget, the view function on your screen allows you to look at and see all of the squares, or you can click speaker view and the lector or preacher, whoever is speaking, will be the primary uh, face that you'll see. So let's join in our opening hymn to the wonderful melody of, uh, Be of Beethoven, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. The life of the Trinity challenges us to be for each other, just as the Father, Son, and Spirit are for one another. We cannot be people of love without being involved in the lives of others, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their successes and in their challenges. Our feast today invites us to reach out, to heal a wound, to forgive someone who has hurt us, 
to mend a broken heart, to feed the hungry, and to create a world of love modeled on the Trinity. Let us open our hearts to God's saving word as we seek his mercy for our failings. Lord Jesus, you revealed that God is a community of persons. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave the apostles power to baptize in the name of the Trinity. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us into this sacred community through the waters of baptism. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to love, a life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us join in praising God as we proclaim the Gloria. I did not have that ready, Father John. Okay, in our hearts, we're proclaiming the Gloria. Maybe we can recite the glory be to God together. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, you have given us a share in the life that is yours with your Son and the Holy Spirit. Strengthen that life within your church that we may know your presence, observe your commands, and proclaim the gospel to every nation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the Old Testament recounts the Exodus story and describes a God who liberated the Israelites from Egyptian bondage by brute force. Violent acts are never the way to a true and lasting peace and certainly not God's way. It's always important to take a critical eye when reading the scriptures and place them in their context. I ask Mary Ellen Judson to deliver our first scripture. This is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything ever so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did the people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of a fire, as you did, and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonder, by war, with a strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God to the heavens above and the earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children, after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. For the word of the Lord. 
One of the metaphors that St. Paul uses for how God saves us is the word adoption. Although we are God's children and our faith can be childlike, it should never be childish. We need to grow in mature understanding and adult response in our faith because God has given us intelligence and critical thinking as tools to use in responding to the Spirit. I ask Rita Mitchell to deliver our second reading. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Um, a reading from the letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For if you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. 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 Glory to the To God who is, who was, and is yet to come. Alleluia, alleluia. Halle, 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 alleluia. Halle, 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 alleluia. Halle, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. 
and with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the good news according to Matthew. Glory to you, Glory o Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. For our assurance, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. This morning on the uh, Feast of the Holy Trinity, a challenging feast at any way, I'd like to illustrate uh, the homily for you. And you give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Okay. There is no limit to the mystery of God. Long before it was a theory, God was an experience. One man writes about his first memory of understanding God. I was two or three, he recalls, and I was angry about something, very angry. I threw a tantrum and flew through the house crying and stomping. I ran and hid under my bed where I lay muttering to myself about how awful my mother was and how much she hated me. Finally, when I ran out of steam, I looked out from under the bed, and there was my mother. She was sitting quietly the whole time in the rocking chair, holding a glass of milk and a chocolate chip cookie and patiently waiting. She wasn't angry at all, just waiting until I was ready to climb into her lap to be comforted. That may be my earliest memory of any kind, he writes, a memory of God, because it's what I think of when I read, God is love. People all over the world and through all generations affirm the existence of God in many ways and call God by many titles. The early American Indians on the plains, the Incas in South America, the people of Islam, all cultures affirm the existence of God in one way or another. Within our Christian revelation, as we celebrate today's feast, we are given access to know the secret of God's inner dynamic life and to know God as truly a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Throughout the centuries, philosophers and theologians, artists and poets, ordinary folk like you and me, have tried to depict, explain, or imagine what this Holy Trinity, this inner life of God, is like. The poet Anne Lamott said, I didn't need to understand the hypostatic union of the Trinity. I just needed to turn my life over to whoever came up with redwood trees. If we look at some images of Christ through the ages, I recall one similar to this that was on the first page of my childhood catechism book. God depicted as the grandfatherly man holding the globe and scepter, Jesus holding on to the cross, his hands raised in the blessing, and the Holy Spirit pictured as a dove 
light emanating into all of them. Another similar depiction from a beautiful altarpiece in uh, Germany at a uh, Renaissance painting. Again, the elderly God encapsulating the Christ on the cross and the Holy Spirit, the dove centered. The Famous depiction from Russian iconography, the iconographer Andrei Rublev. It's Abraham, the three mysterious visitors from the story in the Old Testament who come and visit and bring a blessing to Abraham and Sarah. Three equal partners, three sharing at the table together. And of course, we're all familiar with the uh, Irish shamrock used, as legend says, by St. Patrick as a catechetical tool to show the Trinity. One flower, three lobes to it, three in one. The ancient pictures of uh, Jesus and God, the old man and the Holy Spirit as a dove, someone once said, oh, it's two men and a bird. And I think that there might be other images for us, certainly for me, that resonate uh, and I can relate to better. The Celtic spirituality is filled with wonderful uh, geometric images of the diversity within unity of the Trinity. Each of the next images are pictures that an artist has entitled Trinity. And see if you can have a sense of that unity within diversity of the triune God in these. Many contemporary theologians and writers speak about the movement of the divine within the three persons. And so images that capture a spirit of dynamism and movement uh, can also give us a glimpse into the inner dynamic of the Trinity. The sense of the cosmos. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And here we see cosmic images depicting Father, Son, and Spirit. A variety of colors, yet forming one unity, one image. This was done by an artist who used recycled paint from a hazardous material facility, blending a contemporary challenge environmental challenge with an understanding of God as movement. And one of the ones that has spoken to me is the, this image, which really gives a sense of God in motion. We still have the sense of God, the older, there's even a white beard on the right hand of the screen, but then we have the hands and feet of the crucified Christ with the wounds there. And then at the top, perhaps the wings of the dove, but all of it united, all of it in motion, the sense of unity in diversity. And isn't that what we need to live a Trinitarian life in our multi-diverse world? that has such a difficult time in bringing that diversity into a spirit of unity. Perhaps as a child, you heard the legend about St. Augustine, who used to meditate long and hard on the mystery of the Holy Trinity as he tried to understand it. Strolling along the seashore one day, wondering how there could be three persons and one God, he noticed a small child repeatedly scooping up water from the sea in a shell and carrying it to a hole in the sand 
into which he emptied the water. Curious, Augustine walked over and asked the child what he was doing. Smiling up at him, the child said, oh, I'm emptying the sea into this little hole. And Augustine replied, why, even if you spent your whole life at this task, child, you could never complete it. The sea is far too vast and deep to be contained in a small hole. And the child looked up solemnly at Augustine and said, yet I will complete this task before you can ever fully comprehend the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And with that, the legend says the child vanished and Augustine realized that he was an angel sent to him by God to point out the futility of his efforts to understand this mystery. It may be a mystery, but we've staked our faith in our lives on our belief in the God who reveals himself as Trinity. So I think we should do all we can, all within our power to humbly try to understand this triune mystery we call God. At one of our morning chapel masses, which fourth graders were attending a couple of years ago, I shared with them some pages of an illustrated children's book that I discovered called Images of God for Young Children. Each page had a beautiful illustration and a corresponding text. And one of the adults shared, said that, you should probably share that with us too. On the left, God as light. On the right, God is secret. God is tears. And God is joy. God is stream. And God is root. God is promise. And God is strength, the strength of an elephant. God is smallness, the baby robin in the nest, and God is friend. God is life in a newborn, and God is parent, sending the child off for the day. In all these images, we see that God is essentially relational, not existing as some isolated entity, but in communion with, with the Trinity and with all of us. An Irish Dominican uh, wrote a beautiful reflection on his childhood memory about coming into the presence of his father after the boy had taken his bath, wrapped in a white bath towel like a newly baptized Christian, filled with delight at his father's pleasure in him, who lays his hands on his child's head as if in ordination. He writes, I was five or at most six years old, the second youngest, but once I braved the darkness of the stairs alone, my trial was over. From shadows into light, the door opened and I stepped into the hush of the room. So vivid, I remember that bright threshold, but real illumination came moments later when I knelt down next to the fire, as near as I could to my father's chair and bowed my head. I remember as soon as he began to dry my hair with a towel and warm my hair with his hands, lifting his two palms to the fire and letting them rest on my head. I thought I was the son of a God. So make the Trinity the heart of your faith. Nourish that faith through personal prayer so the life of the Father, Son, and Spirit will echo within your own life. And be an effective witness to the gospel by testifying that Jesus is the Lord of your life. And start with your own family and friends who need to hear Jesus' message of love. And look at the world with a sense of wonder. God is so much bigger than any definition we can devise or category we can conjure up. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans for today's feast, informs us about the heart of the Trinity. 
that God is for us when he said, you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. Paul could as easily have said, when you go to God, cry out, Mama, Mother. Surely the living spirit of the living God is most evident in that kind of love. Let us join in it, professing our faith in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, From there he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. Let us glorify God, praying as one family for all our needs. I ask Maria and Dennis Roland to lead our prayer. For the church, sent to make disciplines of all nations, may we teach and live what Christ has commanded in the gospel of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the peoples of the earth created in God's image, may the world find the way to peace in God's providential design. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all are sick, especially those still afflicted by coronavirus. And for Christine Olson, Bob, and Bob Schramm, that they may receive healing from the hands of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our young people may be given wisdom in knowing and responding to God's call in their lives, especially our graduates and those making important decisions for their future. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That married couples, parents and children may allow their mutual love to reflect the image of the triune God and for the safety of travelers and vacationers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all the departed who have died in Christ may live forever in the land God has destined for us, especially men and women of our military services who have died for our country, victims of gun violence, and Nan McQuaid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us bring our own personal needs and prayers before God. God, our Father, you have given us a share in the life that is yours with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Strengthen that life within us that we might acknowledge your presence and be faithful to Christ's commission to spread the good news. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts in this one as we pray as Jesus taught us.
Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power, power and the glory, the glory are, are yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And those of you in your domestic church with your family, exchange that peace with one another as those of us worshiping alone extend it in our hearts. Lord our God, let our hearing of your word and our worship of the ever-blessed and undivided Trinity bring us wholeness of mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to our graduates from St. Perpetua Elementary School uh, who celebrated their graduation this weekend and to all of our uh, students elementary, high school and beyond, and college students that are uh, graduating. May the future unfold for them in safety and in success. I'll share the Eucharist outside the front doors of the church at 1030 for any who wish to receive. Uh, don't forget about the Bishop's Appeal. Um, thanks to those who have contributed. If everybody does a little bit, we'll be able to uh, meet that goal that's set for us. This Wednesday at seven o'clock online will be our last town hall. Um, last week was our 50th or 51st town hall covering an am amazing array of topics and the guests who have been with us have been informative and inspirational. This Wednesday for our last town hall, uh, we'll have representatives from Las Trampas whose motto is success beyond disability. Um, I think we all are aware of Las Trampas and Lafayette. We see many of the adults with disabilities that uh, work in the city, uh, cleaning streets for us and making our city uh, beautiful. Uh, but I'm, maybe we are unaware of the amazing work that, that Las Trampas has done for over 60 years, providing educational and vocational services to people with developmental disabilities and their families, and they're in the midst of a capital campaign to build a new uh, facility to accommodate the ever-increasing needs of individuals who are often overlooked and undervalued. Again, that's Wednesday at 7. Our schedule continues as it is uh, Saturday evening mass in the church at 5 o'clock, our online service as now at 9.30, and then on Sunday evening at six o'clock, an outdoor Eucharist on the upper field. Uh, I'm anticipating that this schedule will change in the near future as um, more and more people are vaccinated and as both the um, uh, state and county and diocesan guidelines change. So we should be, begin to be thinking about uh, returning to our uh, uh, worship uh, in, the church in community and the physical presence of one another in due time. Well, with the relaxation of COVID restrictions, more people will be traveling this summer. So let's call God's blessing on any of our parishioners who will be traveling during the month of June. Um, if any of you are there, uh, if you bow your heads, I'll allow for God's blessing uh, for you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have created a wide and wonderful world in which we can travel. 
We ask your blessing upon the members of St. Perpetua who will be vacationing or traveling during the month of June. Spread the road before them with beauty and adventure. Give them rest and refreshment. Be their companion, O Lord, especially during moments of disappointment or delay. Shield them from all harm and bring them home again in safety and in peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the power of the triune love fill your days as we reflect the Trinity's life and share its joy. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our closing hymn is Holy God, we praise thy name.